Okay, so I've assumed that uh, you know a lot about Blender, or at least a little bit enough to know that you can create objects and uh, meshes, and how to do edit mode, and how to add uh, loops, and so on and so forth. This is going to be a much more concise one to do, uh, or concise tutorial. I have just recorded one which is much more lengthy, and 52 minutes long, I'm explaining most of the things, as well as also some other features. So, this one is nice and concise. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a uh, basic shirt that is uh, unwrapped and low poly. So that will mean that you can always add detail, you can subdivision surface, you can add more detail uh, that way as well, or you can sculpt onto it. But this is going to be a low poly shirt, which is very basic shape, very basic topology. So it's a good start for those who just want to learn how to do clothing. Uh, which already have more who already have knowledge of how to use blender to some degree so first of all shift a plane alt g to reset its position g z move it up to a runabout chest height first uh, front orthographic view r x 90 you can see that i have my uh my stuff here my um my inputs here so you can see what i'm doing then side orthographic g y move uh y g sorry yes why there we go had to reset my orientations g y move to the front front orthographic view again scale down to around about there edit mode loop cut cancel that so it's in the middle then select one side delete in half go to the middle don't worry about making a seam or a sharp don't need to do that uh, move it around about there and bring it down i'm going to do a to about there. Add modifier, mirror. You can enable clipping if you want to, that's good. Clipping, good for when we do the back. Clipping, not good when we want to have things close to each other but not in the middle because then it will automatically snap it. You can also disable merge so then that way if you want to have uh, sharp edges and stuff uh, or whatever. Um, yeah. So now that I've done that, I'm going to add three loops, sorry, five loops, like so. I'm going to now enable shrink wrap modifier. I'm going to pop it onto the body. I'm going to push it up using shift in order to create a fine control. There we go. I am now going to push these into the middle here. And the reason why you want to have it open at first is because obviously just in case if you want to have an open shirt or like an open top, you see here now that I can't move it because clipping is enabled. So I'm going to disable clipping and bring it open like that. It's not a perfect uh, center though. So the reason why it's not a perfect center is because shrink wrap is causing that. And that's because it's quite far away. Push the center one in a bit further and you'll get it snapping to the center. You don't really need to do this with any other ones, but yes, just mainly for the ones which are there. So now I'm just gonna scale this down. I'm gonna start extruding and scaling it down and making sure it goes to uh, over the neck and uh, body. So now I'm here, I'm going to push this into the middle, add a loop cut there, and I'm going to now extrude downwards. I'm not really going to care about the poly down, uh, or it being pretty low poly here, I'm just going to add uh, a loop cut there and there, actually, or I can push this in further, or I can pull this out a bit further as well. Uh, pushing it, or putting it out, allows it to have a little bit less accuracy, but it allows you then to have a bit more um, space between the model. I'm going to add a loop cut down the middle and that's essentially most of this shirt done already. So now as you see here I have how many loops? I have one, two, three, four. I only have one, two, three here. So this is where I'm going to come, uh, go and manually push this down by using the slide tool. That's G twice. I'm going to add another one here and there we go. I have now made that. So I'm going to now select all these so hold and shift and select on that and do an F. Then I'm going to go down the middle. Ah, and it's not going to do that. The reason why is because it is asymmetrical. Wonderful. So because it's doing that, I'm going to have to then do this. and do it manually by hand. So just simply select, select, select. F, 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 essentially. And I'm going to add three loops here. Now I'm going to enable proportional editing. That's O. And I'm going to scroll it in so it's a little bit less uh, powerful than that. And as you see there, we've got basically a vest done. Now, the reason why is 
doing this is because obviously it's not close enough to the blade. So I can do that. And I'm going to make it a bit more like so. This is going to be my collar right there. Perfect. And the reason why it's doing that is because I need to do shift N and face area. And then obviously it's causing some issues there because I don't know why. So shade smooth and there we go, fixed. Right. So now for the sleeves, I'm going to do E, X, bring it in, S, X, zero to center it up. And then do this again, do this again, do this again. Now you can see there it's starting to become a little bit low poly. So I'm going to add another loop there. I'm going to scale this in so it's a bit more accurate. Uh, EX, EX, and then just simply pull that out there. Add another one there. And as you see there, pretty much good to go. For this one, I'm going to scale it in a lot more so that way the wrist is a lot more accurate. So there we go. And as you see there, basic shirt done essentially. This is pretty much good to confirm. However, as you can see here, the topology looks pretty bad. If I enable my wireframe mode, you can see it's also exceptionally bad. We'll go over that in a second. So now that that's done, I am going to apply the shrink wrap modifier. And as you see there, we're all good to go. I am going to now select down the middle. Whoops, I actually did all of them. There we go. And that's only just to center it. And the clipping then will be enabled or, or allowed to work a lot better. So as you see there, it's a little bit off at some points. If it is, simply drag it out and it will snap back into place. So what I'm going to do now <clears throat> is I'm going to go over and start adjusting these using the slide tool again. And I'm going to have this loop here and I'm going to make it into a seam. And I'm going to make the top one here and then this one. And I'm going to deselect this mark seam. Perfect. The reason why I keep pressing Q is because you can quick favorites and every quick favorites menu uh, is dependent on the mode you're in. So you could be in sculpt mode and have a smooth brush on. You could have uh, a smooth or a, uh, a specific modifier or tool set to your quick favorites using Q. Um, or you can have like go into edit mode and have a completely different set. So it doesn't really matter. Um, I have the ones which I need on. So with edit mode, it's face mode. Um, with object mode, it's import, export, uh, clear up unused data blocks, which is like basically optimal or cleaning up your unused materials and animations and shape keys and models and stuff if you're working on a larger project. So all I'm doing here is I'm simply just going over and simply cleaning up my a little bit and the reason why I did those marks uh, mark seams early is because uh, when I am done with this um, as you see here I am practically done I'm gonna call it there because that has been eight minutes so far so um, I'm actually almost done with it to be honest might as well keep going so shrink wrap is a powerful tool uh, but you want to make sure two things you want to keep in mind is the closer you are to the model with it and uh, the original mesh to the model you're shrink wrapping onto um, the more accurate it is however the more likely you're going to have clipping um, just because the way it works um, and the further away you are the more generous it is and the more space it gives however the less accurate it will be to stick into the model's shape so you want to keep those two things in mind when you're doing a shrink wrap modifier you can also combine it with a smooth corrective modifier, but we'll go over that on another video. This is just a quick, super concise way of doing hard poly surface modeling. Um, and if you get stuff like this, where it is a little bit too out of shape, don't worry about it. You can always add a subdivision surface modifier if you want to add more detail or have it a bit smoother. So here we go. I'm going to call it there for my topology. Still a little bit rough in edges, but I'm going to, uh, but that's pretty good to be honest. So obviously uh, I might want to add a loop down the middle, you can. Uh, I'm going to do it there actually, and there, and there. Uh, I'm actually going to take this seam away and move it a bit further back here. There we go. So now that I've done that, um, there you go, nice and smooth essentially. So I'm going to quickly fix up the mirror here. There we go. So I'm going to go into UV editing. As you see here, it looks awful, it looks shit. Uh, unwrap, you see there, it's looking pretty okay now. So before that, I'm going to do apply modifier. 
I'm going to do unwrap again. And you see there, I've got pretty good, uh, pretty good stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this to the side here. Make it a bit more universal to work with. And you can do this to one side and then you can cut it in half and do it to the other. Um, so let's do that actually. So you can now mark down the middle seam. And I'm going to do this side. There we go. So you might want to just flip it like this. Apply another mirror modifier. Do this. In the data, set uh, mirror U. And then all you have to do, I have UV select, uh, UV sync on, so uh, yep, that's the thing. Keep forgetting about it. So this is the back, so I'm going to move this back down. I'm going to do this to the front, move it up, I'm going to bring it out this side. And so if you ever have more than just this, bit like accessories and stuff, you can add onto the side of it as well. Um, this just allows for the most efficient way of uh, texturing. Now that you're done, so I'm going to apply this now. As you see there, that's pretty good. So I'm just going to move this into the center a bit more. Make sure it snaps into the middle. Do this, SX0. Do the same for here. So it's roughly in the middle. And there we go. And that is a hard poly surface model of low oh, low poly shirt done. Um, in the next video, I'll do a more concise version of the weight painting as well. Um, I will be planning on doing that hopefully sometime soon. So there we go. There is a very basic, very um, low poly, ready to go essentially, um, without any weight paints and textures done. But it's all UV mapped, ready to be textured, uh, ready to be uh, adjusted. And there is a good base for a long sleeve shirt. If it's short sleeve, just simply cut it off around this point here. If it's you know three quarter length, you can add a loop there, and bam, there's that. If it's just before the elbow, you can do it there. You know, if it's crop top, you can cut it off around here. If it's a vest, you can cut off the arms entirely and smooth these out. Um, if it's a I don't know a reversed crop top, whatever it's called, you can just cut it from here and have that part there. So there we go, nice good base. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in a bit.